Hi, Evie here from Bunk Bed Homestead. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a review of Wild Pastures Meat Subscription. I am an apartment homesteader with three boys and a wonderful husband here in San Diego. And if you're interested in following along with our journey as we become more self-sufficient inside our apartment so that when we have our one day homestead, we can thrive. Go ahead and check the subscribe button. Check it, click it, whatever you do. Go ahead and subscribe so you can stay updated on all my videos. But today we are going to talk about wild pastures. So I'm going to be showing you guys the meat that I got on my first box, how I prepared some of the meat, how it fits in our apartment freezer, if that's even worthwhile, as well as um, if I would recommend wild pastures to somebody or if I would not recommend it. So go ahead and Watch through the whole video and you can see me explain away um, our first experience with wild pastures. But before I do that, I wanted to share how the packaging um, came. So unlike some meat subscription boxes, which we have never tried any, this is our first one, we normally get our meat from Costco. So this is a huge shift for us, but it came in this. So I really like this because it's eco-friendly. It's a cooler bag and it came with dry ice, which was a super fun experiment for the kids. Watch that clip after this. Is crazy. Whoa! Whoa! But um, I really like that it came in this, and it was really great um, delivery-wise. I got a text from the driver because they couldn't find our apartment. He was, you know, checking about where we were, and they found us. But I really appreciate that customer service because I want to get my meat. So, and I knew exactly when it came. So I got a notification that it was delivered. So if you are home and you don't hear a knock or you have a do not knock baby sleeping sign, they will still inform you that your meat has come. So I really like that about um, the company. But what is Wild Pastures? Let's rewind and talk about that. So Wild Pastures is a meat subscription box, but they source their meat from about a hundred or so farmers in the US that are practicing regenerative farming. Now, regenerative farming is beyond sustainable farming. So you have kind of categories of farming and the best for the environment is obviously regenerative. What regenerative farmers do is they are working to create pastures for their animals to graze. And they often use rotational grazing and foraging for their animals so that they are fed off of the land. But then in addition, those animals are putting back into the land good nutrients through fertilizer and the next year when the cows pass by that same pasture or the pigs or the chickens there is even more grass which has sequestered carbon down from the atmosphere and gone down into the roots and into the soil so that you're actually reversing climate change through regenerative farming so huge solution i highly recommend the youtube not youtube netflix movie. I think it's called Kiss the Ground or Kiss the Soil. I'll link it below in the description so you can have access to that. But that really explains what regenerative farming is and why it's so critical and such an amazing and easy thing for humans to do in order to help sequester carbon back into the earth. So I'm all on board with that. In addition, these animals spend their time on pasture. They're going to be frolicking in the grass in the meadows and plucking bugs out of the ground if they're a chicken. They're gonna be um, rooting around on pasture if they're pigs. Um, pigs are omnivores and so are chickens. So I'm not exactly sure if they're fed completely 100% grass or if they have other forage options out there that are allowing them to have, um, you know, if chickens can have like chicken liver or meat or anything else in their diet that actually um, can give them nutrition. Yes, chickens can eat chicken parts, I know, um, and it's not bad for them. But um, that information is not on the website. So um, the packaging, I will show you, and I will show you everything we got in our first box. There are two different um, types of boxes you can get. You can get kind of a starter box, and then you can get a little bit more of an advanced box. We just chose the starter box to begin with, and then we added a couple meats in so that we could have more than just what would be um, appropriate for a family of like one to three, because we are a family of five. Um, I will say when the meat came, I was very pleased with how it was packaged. I was very pleased with the amount that we had gotten. 
and I quickly realized this is not enough meat to feed our family for a month. They work off of a month subscription, so each month you get more meat, um, and you can always add in more before your box closes. So I'm gonna be doing that for my next box. You can kind of bump up and down levels, change the size that you want each month. Um, it's very, very customizable, and I will show you probably towards the end of the video a little like clip of how the website's organized. You can get a feel for it, but let's get to showing you the meat because that's what it's all about. I know I love seeing the products that people get, so hopefully you can enjoy this, and I will check back with you at the very end. You'll hear me voice overing the rest of the video until the very end. Okay, so here we have all of the meat that came in our order. Um, we got some chicken, some ground beef, and some fish, as well as some beef liver over here. This is the chicken, um, some ground beef over this away. I got a whole chicken and this comes packaged without the organs inside. I also got some chicken breast, and comes kind of, you can see the packaging. These are chicken drumsticks, and this is what I typically use to make bone broth, but I'm gonna see how this turns out for bone broth after I pick all the meat off. Um, that's what my plan is for these. I have lots of ground beef here. This is 20% ground beef, and it also says where it was packaged as well as um, that it was packaged in the U.S., which I, you know, am planning on <laughs> um, because that's what it says on the website. I also got a few other things with our ground beef. You can kind of choose um, if you want to have plain ground beef or have some seasonings added. So this one is a beef for fajitas, and it's um, sliced a little bit differently. Um, kind of thinly. This is um, steak kebabs. I'm going to use this likely in a stew because I don't really grill kebabs. And then this is our Italian sausage. And I actually did cook this up pretty quickly and it tastes fantastic. Um, super well seasoned and not salty. So I like that. So coming over this way, I got extra add-ons. These did not come with the box, but I got sockeye salmon, wild caught. Um, there's about six of them in here and they're kind of thinly sliced, so that's good because it cooks up quickly. Then I also got some, um, oh, let's see. Oh, it's sustainable, which is important to me um, as well as wild caught. So here we go to the beef liver. This is a new thing. I tried beef liver once and I was I think it was cooked wrong. So I'm going to try out a recipe from Three Rivers Homestead. She fries it with bacon fat after being breaded with grilled onions and says it's amazing. So I'm counting on that. <laughs> um, this is all of it. So I'm really curious how this is going to fit in my freezer because um, I don't have a lot of freezer space living in an apartment. So um, I think I ordered just the right amount to be able to fit on the top, but we will show you what that looks like in the next clip here in just a minute. And you can see how I fit it all in. All right, so this is our fridge and freezer combo. The fridge is on the bottom, freezer's on the top. As you can see, it is quite small. And look at that, it all fits. And there's extra room to fit a few more things on the top. The bottom is where we keep our frozen fruit. We even have some extra bacon that's waiting to be eaten. Bone broth over here, my veggies for making bone broth. Um, and look at that. It fits. It stacks really well. I stacked a bunch of brown, uh, ground beef on the back, the chicken over there, the fish. Um, it fit really nicely, kind of in a square section in the back there, but it's kind of messy in the front. So I'm happy about that um, and that I even have more space to go if I need to go to the grocery store and grab some frozen goods. So let's shut this up and then I will take you along for my cooking. So here we have these um, defrosting. What I did notice um, is that these definitely need to be put in some sort of container when they're defrosting. The packaging is good, but um, there are some leaks that happen. So I'm um, just gonna defrost these in the bowl. Um, and so that's a safe way to do it if you're gonna do it. Um, kind of cold water at room temperature is the way we defrosted it. It's not technically 
like the safest, but it worked well for us and I'm confident that this meat is fairly high quality. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to make those chicken drumsticks. So I like to cook them in my Instapot and I add about a quarter cup of water on the bottom and then I will put these on high pressure for 10 minutes and let them naturally steam release for 10 minutes. Um, you don't really need to um, add any seasoning I have found, but the one thing I'm curious about is that I've been told that this will taste differently because it's pasture-raised. It might taste a little bit more um, like tough or gamey, but when I tried it, it was so tender, it was not tough, and it tasted amazing. I have no complaints with this chicken. My kids ate it, and I also cooked up that ground beef and made a lentil soup with some celery and some carrots, some bay leaf, and um, just sauteed that beef up like this, and then added it. And I gave this beef to my kids. Um, I was expecting there to be a lot more fat on the bottom because it's 20% fat and it was not that way. So the fat um, does not seem like extra greasy, which I really appreciate, um, and it cooks up really well. I will say that um, here we are plating our food. There is a bit of grizzle in the ground beef. Um, that was not super noticeable, but more noticeable to me because I'm a texture eater. So I just put it on the side of my plate and it worked out fine. And we enjoyed this meal. It was absolutely delicious. Got some steamed carrots with some of that chicken right there and a side of soup for my kid that's super verse. <laughs> this got gobbled up by everybody. Really happy with that. Now, those bones are precious. Do not let them go to waste. I am making bone broth with these. And in my freezer, I keep this handy dandy little bag where I put all of my veggie scraps that can be put into bone broth. Um, onion tops, carrot tops, extra celery pieces, and then whenever I am making bone broth, I just pull this out of the freezer and I put it in my pot with my bones and my water and seasonings that I wanna have, and it will cook up just fine, and then I will reserve whatever I'm not using for the next bone broth batch. Sometimes I will be low on one item and then just need to cut up something fresh, but that is far and few between because we use these things in the kitchen regularly. Onions, carrots, and celery. That's really all you need for flavoring. And so here I'm gonna show you how I will, <laughs> my husband took a video of me, um, how I will put this on so that it's going to cook up into bone broth. Now, there's a debate whether or not you should cook this on high or medium pressure. I have done both. I've done it on medium pressure and cooked it for the maximum amount of time and done that two times through. And you can always adjust by going up or down for your time limits. And I will leave it there. <laughs> um, check on it, crush up the bones, and redo it. So here I left it for almost six hours and it stays warm so that it stays safe gonna show you what that bone broth looks like. It's cooled off now and steam released so I can um, kind of let the rest of the steam go and then pop it off. So bone broth that is not cooked with any flavoring is very light in color. When it's cooked with lots of yummy veggies, especially onions, it turns darker and a more rich color. So this smells amazing and it's ready to be strained. And some people will leave the flavorings in there, but I found it just takes up more space. So first step is to take my strainer and I put it over a smaller pot and I will pour all of that goodness over. And then anything that is solid or larger in particulates will be caught in my strainer. And if you have a compost or you have chickens or animals, you can actually feed them the bone broth discard. Chickens will eat their own bones and there's tons of calcium in them. So I've heard that they enjoy that. Unfortunately, we don't have chickens yet, but one day that will not be going just into the trash can for our family. So here I have some quart jars, a pint jar, and I'm going to dump my broth in. You will see that gorgeous color. And I have to say this broth tasted absolutely unlike any bone broth I have ever had. It does not have any sort of metallic 
taste to it. I didn't realize that the bone broth I was making from Costco chicken bones had this metallic taste, likely due to contaminants in the bones because it's gonna happen. And this bone broth, the pasture-raised wild pasture chicken bone broth, it was out of this world. I don't know how to describe it, but it tasted fantastic. Um, I'm having another batch going in soon. I'll see if I can replicate it or if it was just maybe a fluke in seasonings. But I was really, really pleased with this. And this will go into soups as well as um, anything else throughout the week that we're going to use it for. It's gorgeous. And I do not salt my bone broth. Some people do. I leave the seasoning for later. And let me just show you those bones. So these bones, I was shocked. They are so thick which means that those chickens are able to support their weight when they were alive and they are strong, healthy bones. You want that for your chicken. You don't want those bones to just break suddenly. That's not a healthy chicken. So I know that these chickens were healthy and had a great life and that makes me feel really good about buying, the, buying them. Okay, the moment of truth. Do I recommend wild pastures? So I will go over some pros and cons. Um, at this point, we have finished our entire first box. We have consumed all the meat except for the beef liver. I'm still working up the courage to cook that. And we received our second box today. So I will have the pros, cons, and my final analysis. Pros. Number one, super easy to order. The website is very, very accessible and it's easy to switch out your meat. It's not complicated. Um, another pro would be the pricing. It is fantastic. Right now, at the time of this video being made, a pound of ground beef is $5.99. That is ridiculously cheap compared to any grass-fed, organic beef you're going to get anywhere. And this is a regenerative farm-based cow, so it's more high quality than probably anything you're going to find even at Whole Foods or Costco that's organic. Um, also, the pasture-raised chicken was fantastic. It tasted amazing. And just to have access to pasture-raised chicken bones to be able to make bone broth, for us, that's a huge pro. Um, another pro was the packaging. It's very convenient that it stacks. It stacked really well in our freezer. And as a person who has a super small apartment, I really appreciated that it stacked well because I don't feel like I need to go out and buy a deep freezer in order to keep our meat. Um, the second shipment that came today, I got two whole chickens, like eight pounds of ground pork, 10 pounds of ground beef things, as well as Alaskan cod and a beef tongue. And it all still fit on that top rack of my freezer perfectly. So the size of the meat packaging is a huge plus, as well as being packaged in more individual serving sizes so that you don't have to defrost like five pounds of ground beef at once. It's packaged conveniently. Another pro would be their customer service. I did have a question that I asked them in regards to um, if they ever are going to have soup bones available um, for purchase. And they got back to me very quickly. They were very helpful. I have another question out there that hasn't been answered yet because I just asked it a couple, asked it a couple days ago. But they have excellent customer service. Um, I will say that their their pricing can be a little bit confusing because you do sign up to get a subscription box if that's what you want and I just wasn't sure how things were priced until I got into the website so it's not super upfront but you don't have to get a subscription box you can just order a la carte as well so if that's all you want then you have that option okay let's go into the cons con number one um it would be nice if I could get meat every two weeks um, you can do that, but they don't have a box that's offered every two weeks. You have to do the monthly box thing. I guess you could maybe have two boxes that like alternate. I don't really know how it would work that, but if you wanted meat more frequently or if you're like running out of ground beef and you just need some, um, you know, that you want sooner, it's harder to manage that. So you have to really know ahead of time how you want to plan out your meat for the month. Or just kind of guesstimate like I did and hope that it all works out. <laughs> um, I will also say another con is the, is the packaging. As much as it is convenient to have it stacked, it is thin in spots. And I think that just the all the handling and jostling that likely has happened along the road, there's a more higher chance likelihood of spillage and leakage. So as long as you have it in something that if it spills or leaks, it's not a big deal you're good. Um, it's not a huge con for me. It didn't like impact my experience where I thought it was just like 
terrible, but it is something to be aware of if you are looking for something that's easy to defrost, just on your countertop or in the fridge, you do need a bowl or something underneath it. Another con would be the texture of the ground beef. Now, I love the taste. I love that it's not super fatty. It really truly isn't. However, it's more of a coarse ground beef. And what I mean by that is it's not ground into those fine little like squiggly, like swirly things that you see on typical ground beef cuts or ground beef processing. It's a little bit almost like it went through like a really, really powerful food processor. So because of that, the grizzle is a little bit larger than if it were in a different type of processing facility. So it did not bother me a ton. I'm a super big texture eater, like anything funky in my food, I'm like, well, and I put it next to my plate. <laughs> I did that probably two to three times after every um, like serving I would have of beef. There was like a couple little nodules of fat in there, but there were not any bones. I was really pleased with that. Um, another con I will say is that there, um, how do I describe this? They, they don't really have a wide range of cuts for certain boxes. So you are kind of limited in what you're choosing if you have the subscription box, um, which I mean for the price, it's not a huge deal, but if you are super specific about what type of cuts you want for meat, like you have a, a plan for that, um, and you're a little bit inflexible with that, it might be a challenge for you. I will go back and say, excuse me, <laughs> one more pro. Um, they, <laughs> They have excellent, excellent delivery service. So the person who is trying to find our apartment, I don't know if they contract with the delivery service. I believe they probably do. They, they texted me and then they called me when they couldn't find our apartment. And just to have someone be so committed to making sure that my order came where it was supposed to uh, go <laughs> was really helpful. All right, so all that to say, would I recommend Wild Pastures? Yes, I would absolutely recommend Wild Pastures. How many companies out there are seeking to get regenerative farming um, meats into the hands of consumers? It's not a lot, and it's hard to find places that aren't going to cost like $15 a pound for ground beef. I've been looking for a company for months that would be able to do this. Um, we've been looking in a butcher box, which we didn't try them, but um, I kept on like waiting for a really good deal to come up, and I did not... I did not find anything that um, satisfied us, as well as I don't believe that a lot of their stuff is organic or pasture-raised, so um, just something to consider if you're really wanting to help out by sequestering carbon down into the soil, regenerative farming practices are what you want to look for. Um, but all in all, this is your decision. If you are not comfortable with having that much meat in your house all at once, or you um, just want to have the convenience of going to the grocery store and picking up something when you need it, this might not be a good fit for you. But if you're looking for something that is going to help the environment, is going to help support farmers that are doing really good work out there and a great company, I would recommend it. And as always, as a disclaimer, I am not like an affiliate with Wild Pastures. I don't receive compensation for making this video or for reviewing them. If you do use the link that's in the description to sign up, to possibly get a box in the future, I will get, I think, $20 up to like $100 per order or something. I don't even know how it works, but they have a referral like benefit program if people refer their friends and family. I would never recommend something that I would not tell my entire family to get. <laughs> so I am recommending this. Um, if you watch this video and you like what you saw, if you don't, no big deal, no harm done. I hope that you find something that works for you and I hope that you have a blessed day. Thank you for visiting Bunk Bed Homestead. If you liked this video and stuff like this, um, please let me know in the comment section what you would like to see more of, um, whether that's recipes or product reviews or if you just like watching the unboxing of all the meat, um, that's fine too, just let me know. And then if you are interested in subscribing, please do that so that you can make sure to see all of the other videos that I will be uploading in the future. I don't have a regular posting schedule, but you will get notified when something gets posted. So anyways, 
Have a blessed day, and I hope that you are going to find peace in whatever decision you make with your meat eating. <laughs> Take care.